winter's done with here and I'm raring to get on and make this my best growing season yet. Join me as together we get on with all those essential jobs that'll set me up, hopefully, for success. Hi, I'm Ben Van Heems and on this channel we share the best tips for growing an easy and productive vegetable garden. Righty ho then, let's get on with it because there's quite a lot on my list. First up is a general tidy up. There are weeds and prudings to be moved to the compost heap and overhanging branches to cut back. Trees and shrubs obviously grow and in time have a habit of overshadowing vegetable growing areas. So it's important we cut back any overhanging branches to let more light in and also to increase the airflow around your crops. Now every garden has a weed that stands head and shoulders above the rest for being a complete nuisance. In my case it's brambles and there are a few ungainly patches around the garden that if left soon get out of control. When weeding it's important to trace right back to the root and yank out as much of it as you can. There we go. You want to trace the roots back as far as possible and a fork to loosen up the soil will certainly help with this. These nettles, for example, have a habit of snaking just underneath the soil surface and then popping up here, there and everywhere. A little time spent now diligently hunting and digging out the roots will pay off later on in this season. Procrastination is an unfortunate habit of mine that I really don't recommend. My raised beds should have received their top up of organic matter back in the winter or even last autumn. I've done a few of them, but now it's time to crack on with the rest. The uh, remainder of the compost I've taken from my now somewhat depleted compost heap. It's beautiful earthy stuff and just smells magnificent and it'll be absolutely packed with all sorts of fantastic nutrients. Compost is absolutely loaded with nutrients, including, importantly, vital micronutrients. This stuff is absolute gardener's gold. It will feed the worm population and all of the other soil life, contributing to a really healthy environment around your crop's roots. This stuff will go down an absolute treat on the raised beds. Remember you're actually feeding the soil, not your plants. Concentrate on feeding the soil and all the soil life in it, and everything else will follow. Spread it at least an inch or three centimetres deep, but deeper if you have plenty of compost to spare, or if you're starting off new growing areas that would benefit from this initial boost. With my old compost heap now exhausted, I recently started this new one here. It's about four foot or 1.2 metres on each side, and it'll get that tall as well. What that means is there's lots of volume, so it's well sheltered and insulated from the cold, and that'll really help to generate the heat needed for good decomposition. There's pretty much everything that goes into here, from garden scraps, kitchen waste, bits of cardboard, old plant stalks, everything. If it's organic, it's going in, and this will be tomorrow's Gardener's Gold. This tree came crashing down in a recent storm. I've tried to move it myself, believe me, but I'm just not superhuman in strength, so I've enlisted some help. Tom here is going to saw the tree up with spectacular efficiency. Right, here we go. Just look at the way the chainsaw breezes through the wood like a hot knife through butter. The chopped up wood is going to be great to use as firewood to keep us warm through the winter, but I've also got in mind another project Hugel culture. Hugel culture is when you bury logs and branches underneath soil to create raised beds that feed the crops as the wood gradually breaks down. It's going to be a great project to try out and I'm quite keen to do it next growing season. In the meantime, these will stack away nicely at the side here. 
Tom is also going to help with a few piles of branches and prunings that we've got dotted around the garden. Now there's a chance there could still be some hibernating animals in there, so we'll go carefully and move back if we do come across any, so as not to disturb them. A shredder, as I found out, costs quite a bit to hire, so it's really handy that Tom has his own and can work through these piles quite quickly. The shreddings are being collected into old bulk bags, left over from previous deliveries of compost. I could leave them there in the bag to gradually turn into compost themselves, but I've got other plans. I'm using the shreddings to top up the paths. Not only does this give a nice clean look and keeps it dry underfoot on rainy days, it's also a great home for all sorts of beneficial bugs, such as ground beetles, and these will help with overall pest control. These raised beds form my main growing areas. The beds to my left were put in when we first moved here about three years ago. They're on a bit of a slope, which isn't ideal. So when I put these ones in last winter, I made sure to get them level by cutting them into the slope. It gives a nice flat surface to sow and plant into, and the water doesn't just drain off, making it all a lot easier. Lesson learnt. Putting in that second row of beds really helped open up the growing opportunities, but frankly, it wasn't enough so I'm going to go ahead and put in a third row of beds. This will add a nice depth to the vegetable garden, as well as offering more places to potter and stroll. Lovely stuff. The first job is to drop all of the beds into position, tweaking their layout in order to get them evenly spaced and leaving enough room to move between them easily. With that done, it's time to mark them out with a spade and then dig the soil out just enough in order to achieve a nice level bed. The trenches in which the walls of the bed will sit are deepest along the top of the slope, then get shallower as I work down along the sides of the beds. Luckily the slope isn't too deep, or there'd be an awful lot more digging than this. OK, so with the trenches dug, it's time to drop the bed into position. I couldn't find my spirit level for love nor money, but, handy tip, there are spirit level apps you can download for free. Very handy. Right, so it looks like this first bed isn't quite level, so I'm going to scoop out more of the soil to get this perfect. It's worth the faff, because the end result will be so much better and will make things a lot easier in the long run. Second time lucky, here goes. And there we have it. Once I've finished levelling each bed, I'm using the excavated soil to push back into the gaps and hold the beds nice and firm, ready for filling. Phew, and there we have it, job done. In fact, these pallet collars I've used are a perfect depth for a raised bed, and you can even stack them up to create a double or even triple depth bed. Most pallet collars and pallets are nowadays heat treated, which harmlessly extends the life of this wood, so this will be great for these beds. You can check that's the case if you're going to use pallets by looking for the HT symbol on the pallet stamp. Finally, I thought we'd take a quick pit stop into the nerve centre of the garden, the greenhouse, to show you what I've got growing here. I've got three types of tomato this year, Roma, Moneymaker and Red Pear, and they're coming along really nicely despite it being still quite cold even in the greenhouse. I've got pea shoots here which are just about to be cut, and then once I have cut them a few times I'm going to split them up and actually try planting them outside to then get some peas. I've got two types of lettuce here. These ones here are from our time challenge and you can see actually that they've all taken really well and I promise you I haven't made this up. I've had a 100% success rate so I'm really happy with that. Spring onions here, ready to plant out. I'll probably get those out once I've filled those beds tomorrow, so those will be the first thing to go in. Then these here are my main bulbing onions. I like starting them off from seed because I just find that they grow 
even more vigorously and they've all transplanted well and are looking pretty healthy. And then finally, I've got some beets or beetroot here and some chard. So there's lots here and I'll be sowing a lot more this weekend. Well, it's been an incredibly productive time here in my garden and I'm feeling really positive and set up for the new growing season. Please share your tips for a productive start to the growing season below. And for more inspiration, why not follow us on Instagram? I'll catch you next time.